Hi, Meg. Hi. So today you, you wanted to talk about cervical cancer. I wanted to cancer. talk about um, UTIs, um, smears. Yeah. Uh, would be a good one. Um, yeah, just I think, you know, let's, we talk about the menopause a lot, but I think we should talk about, um, you know, do women know they should go every three years? And if you haven't, maybe go and look in your diary, go check and see if you had your, your every three years, your smear. Because it happened to because I was thinking, when did the last time I go? So, no, it's a really good topic. It was one, you know, I've been thinking of as well, because June was cervical cancer month. And with yeah. COVID, um, one of the things um, as GPs we found is, you know, people, are, we, we can't, we haven't been doing smears like we uh -huh. normally would do. And also, you know, people, because they're worried about maybe going to see, see their GP or maybe worried about overburdening their GP, haven't been um, going to see them. And so, you know, one of the things we're worried about coming out now of lockdown uh, slowly is that will there be a surge in cancers? You know, will there suddenly be more people being diagnosed? Be, you know, will there be later diagnoses? And yeah, and I think, you know, um, one of the things that happened um, following Jade Goody, um, Jade Goody, unfortunately, she died of yeah. cervical cancer. There was a huge uptake in um, people going and remembering their, getting their cervical smears done. But then it went back. You know, there was a, a peak and then, then afterwards it all um, went downhill again. So, yeah. you know, we do need to, to get it make out this there. aware. Yeah. And I'm going to say, ladies, if you haven't, go to your surgery. There is an email and go and email your doctor saying, I think um, it's time for my smear. Could you just check in my file? And if it is, please, can I come in? They don't mind doing that. But at least they, then they will send you an email back saying, no, it's not for six months, so don't worry about it. Or, oh, my God, it was six months ago. You need to come back in. So just the, just send and the uh, email. There's one for prescription. There's one for appointments. And I think Because one just, of the things yeah. is, even though you are technically meant to have a reminder, so, so just to give a quick reminder, every woman over the age of 25 is invited for a smear test. So, yeah. so twenty up until and it, every three years up until you are forty nine, forty nine years old, and then it becomes every five years until you're sixty four, and then right. you're not then you're not part of the screening program, so you, you don't automatically get recalled to. Don't, um, don't no, you? no, I know, and it's a bone of contention. I even think you know one of the things that slightly um, is a bugbear for me is why at forty nine do we go up to five years when you know nowadays so many of us are in new relationships so many of us are you know starting a fresh you know sort of second win yeah i i would do mine every three years definitely i would not but, but if you are over 64 you can self-refer yourself so you can request a smear test if you feel that you should be ongoing i mean there are reasons behind it i mean it's a screening program and the highest risks um, the highest times that women get um, cervical cancer are 25 to 30, um, sorry, 30, um, um, 30 to 40 year old age group is when you get the peak of cervical cancer. Yeah, but there so, has been a lot after the age of 60. Oh of gosh, yeah. I mean, and also... I, mean, I, can, uh, name, I can name friends, mums on one hand. So that's why, um, and, and I work with the um, Lady Garden women and... We're all trying to make that, um, you know, it shouldn't be forgotten at 60 because their mums all died of cervical cancers. One of well, the one five of the, ones in yeah, so, the 60s. So, you know, we, I think it is about making a bit of a song and dance about that as well. I mean, one, one of the things is that um, you're in a higher risk category. If you're a smoker, you're at higher risk. And if you're immunocompromised, and we know as we grow older, our immunity is not as strong um, as it was when we, we no. were younger. So, so that is another reason to consider. And especially if you have had um, maybe change of partner, um, if you've had HPV, vac uh, HPV um, infections. So, I mean, in the past, so it, it puts you at a higher risk. So, um, so yes, it's every three years up until 49 and then every five years until 64. And then yeah then we're almost deemed too old to bother, be bothered about. But you can self-refer yourself. And I still say to my women, you know, 
who my my patients um that's not me being possessive about my women i'm just saying about my, yeah, my yeah. the patients that come in um that if when when they're on hrt um i would like to get them to have their smears done every two or three years i mean yeah. and on the I'm, on the continent they're done um in america they're done annually in, in yeah. some european countries they're done annually or every two years so um, you know, as part of a general health check and MOT, because I think, you know, it's really important to look after your health and almost, you know, put reminders in your phone. Well, this is when this happened. Yeah, because I, need to get I know my man. I haven't done one. And you know what we do? We just also the other thing is, as you're as you're getting older and you're in getting interested into your late 50s and 60s, not for everybody. But a lot of women are not as sexually active or whatever with their husbands anymore. So, you know, they you know, might even have separate beds or, you know, or just their lives are, are not as, as, as um, sexual, not, maybe. No, awful yeah. word to say. Just, yeah. yeah, just not the same as they used to be. So with that. You know, you you know, you so you just probably think, well, I'm not using it that much. I'm not, you know, so I sort of stop thinking about it down there can very easily happen yeah yeah you know it's like you can anything. neglect you're not it using it then you know you're not getting it all ready and all done for yeah, friday exactly. saturday sunday night you know but that might be another reason to go and see somebody why are you not feeling or, or you know could, could there be something that we could help you with to help you feel maybe a little bit more sensual sexual is it just is it a, because of vaginal dryness and leading on yeah. to your new tract infections you know if you are yeah. if you are dry down there if you've got vaginal atrophy then you're going to get um your new tract so infection. painful wouldn't it yeah i mean it's really yeah, uncomfortable absolutely. i mean the signs of urinary tract infections are sort of burning stinging um when you go for a pee having to go yeah. more frequently you may even notice some blood in your urine um so those are common symptoms and, the and they're why, from, from, from they, yeah, from the lack of estrogen, aren't they? Once again, so so when estrogen declines, you know, you get that area becomes dry, and and the pH changes, so you lose that protection. But the other thing is, you know, people talk about honeymoon cystitis. They talk about, you know, younger yeah. women, younger women do get it as well. It's because the urethra, which is the pipe from the bladder to the to the outside. Yeah, yeah. sort of from the bladder to the other, that pipe is only three centimeters or so long in a woman, so so it's quite easy for infection to go up it. Of course, yeah, I can see, yeah. So so I don't I don't usually say it's caused by sex. Um, you know, when people talk about it, it's usually caused by the change in frequency. So if you go from some to a lot or naught to some, then that's one of the reasons why you might get um, an infection. Okay. And men don't because their pipe works as they keep telling us how it's about 12 centimeters from the bladder to the outside. Oh, you know, is it? We'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll just take their Depending word Depending how long. Exactly. The other thing can be if you are at work and you're holding on, you're not going, you know, you're really holding on, you're not going for a pee when you should do. Yeah. Then, then, then that urine stays in your bladder and it just then festers. Okay, you can't see my hands, festers. Yeah. And so, so that's another reason. So, and so also don't be hydrated. hold on for as long as you can, no. Don't Not hold good. on and drink plenty of water. Don't get dehydrated. And yes. the other tip I always say is um, make sure you empty your bladder each time. Because as women, sometimes we can rush and we can, especially when we go to public toilets, we hover. You know, we don't let our bums touch yeah. the seats, do we? We hover. So when and then you go... Yeah, but when we hover, we're not totally relaxed. So we no. end up leaving some urine in our bladder. Yeah. So that's why, that's another reason why, you know, you should be should relaxed. Should sit and relax and, yeah. And, and another tip I give is, so when you are sitting on the toilet and you think you've finished, yeah. rock, rock backwards and forwards. Yeah. Okay, because that triggers the nerves at the base of the bladder. And if there's any left in there, it will it'll get, it'll, it'll, it'll get you to pee. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> did you have a little hear that? <laughs> Do we say. want to talk about how a smear is taken and why maybe people might be put off it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, go. Right, yeah. Because, because um, you know, talking about vaginal atrophy, you know, when you are over the age of 50 and it's a bit dry down there, you might think, I don't want to go for a smear test because what a smear test entails is having a speculum passed and then you... 
and you and open then, it up. And then, and, and it, yeah, and if it's dry there, then obviously that's going to be really be painful, isn't it? So that's the time to use some vaginal lubricant pre lubricant, beforehand. Yes. Yeah, yes. Meg. Um, okay, and some moisturizer. Lotion, lotion. Yeah. And you can also ask for littler ones, can't you? I've heard. Yeah. You have smaller ones, don't you? Yeah, the slimline ones. So, so I usually with my patients, I give them some estrogen for two weeks beforehand. To, so that it's not so dry and it's not going to be so uncomfortable. So ask your GP for that if you feel dry and uncomfortable. And then you can also get a slimline speculum, which then, yeah. you know, I'm doing that because it opens up like that. Yeah. And, and, and look, I'm not going to deny it's, um, it's not the nicest of things in the sense of, you know, you're having to undress, you're on a couch, you're having something inserted. But it's such an important screening yeah. tool that it catches um, the cells and what cervical cancer is is that there's a change in the cells that the way that they are multiplying so when you do your smear test it's not looking for cancer it's looking for change so don't worry that you're going to go in and get some really bad news we're trying to get it before we get to that yeah because so much can I'm be done you. so 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 that's my kind of message is you know apply some moisturizer down there vaginal moisturizer lube if you are uh -huh. particularly dry, ask your GP for some estrogen because yeah. lo local estrogen cream or um, and, and then, um, oh, look, somebody said I always insert my own speculum. I find that more comfortable. Yeah, oh. I mean, some people do. You know, sometimes your nurse might give you the speculum oh. and say, do you want to insert it? Which, you know, you can relax a little bit more and then insert it. Yeah, so yeah. that's a really good thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I I would say definitely do um, you know go go and have a look back at your diary, see when your last one was, and then send an email to your GP or go to see Dr Harper to do a smear or yeah. you know she she can do them for you um, just in Harley Street, so you can do that or go to your GP. But um, there'll probably be a very big backlog. But but get your name down so you are yeah. down. I mean, I, it's, it's one of the things. And the other things is, you know, um, the, there's a vaccine, an HPV. So 99% of cervical cancers are caused by HPV, which is human papilloma virus. Yeah. Okay? And it's a very common virus. You know, it's a very common um, virus. It's, um, you know, it, it's the same virus which causes sort of genital warts. Um, but it's very, very common. And a lot of us will have it. And a lot of us will, 80% of us will just get over it without even realizing that we've had it. But mm -hmm. obviously, you know, as we grow older, our immune system's not there. But, you know, if you've got young children, you know, sort of um, 12 and 13 year olds, it is now part of the national um, vaccination program. Yeah, and so you can, like hers, I remember. Yeah, yeah. yes, as did my daughter. And now it's even offered to boys as well. So it's boys and girls. Um, Australia was well ahead of us and they offered it to both boys and girls from the outset and they now say they haven't got any cervical cancer um, mm. but it's available for um, um, from the ages of 12 to 45 but in the, on the NHS it's only free up until the age of 25 but then you can have it you know from a private doctor and I often yeah. do recommend it to my patients who so you can't you have to pay for it over the age of 25 yes yeah yeah. Okay. So, so make sure your, you know, your children, your sisters, brothers, you know, anybody who's in that age group gets there done. Um, and yeah. I, and I often say to women who are in their forties, thirties, forties, who are starting new relationships, I think it's a good investment. You know, although it's le you know, it's 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 going to give you less protection than when you were. Yeah. You know, in your teens, you will still get some protection. Okay, well, I'll be booking mine in then, maybe next week. I, uh, yeah, okay. That, was, that wasn't directed just at you, though, Meg, but I'm just saying, you know, lots of us are in new relationships and, you know, starting the dating yeah, no, game no, all I over need, again. No, I need to do it. I haven't done it for three years. Yeah. I know I haven't. Um, okay, no, that's great. And I just want to say for um, the other thing is um, the cervical smear is taking the cells from the, the neck of the womb or the, you know, sort of the entrance to the womb. So the other thing is, um, if you are a trans man and you've still got a cervix in place, yeah. you still do need to have a smear. And also, if you've got a hysterectomy and they didn't remove your cervix, you also need to have a smear. Right. Okay. Can girls have that if they've had the first batch? 
for only one strain of a PHPV? So, so what she means is, um, and, and I think I know what she means is, when the NHS first rolled it out, they they rolled out a vaccine called Cervarix, which covered okay. only, which covered only two strains of HPV. Oh, um, HPV 16 and HPV 11, which are the most virulent forms, the ones that cause 70% of the cancers. There's another um, uh -huh. vaccine called Gardasil, and that has four strains of HPV. And yeah. Gardasil have now come out with a new one, which I really like because it covers nine, look at me, nine strains of HPV. And there are 18 yeah. in total. Um, wow. So, 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 so the other thing is it also protects against genital warts as well. You know, when you go into the four and the nine strain, um, yeah. they also, it's not just cervical cancer it covers, it also covers genital warts. So, um, so if your daughter's already had the course of cervix, then if you, if you wanted her to have another course of, um, um, you know, to cover the other HPV strains, I'd be saying rather than going for Gardasil 4, go for Gardasil 9. But you wouldn't be entitled to that on the NHS. You'd okay. probably have to pay for that. Right, okay. And what is Gardasil 9? Gardasil 9 is, is um, so Cervix is one brand of vaccine, but it only has two HPV. It covers only two HPV. Yeah. And Gardasil is another brand of vaccine which covers four HPV strains, but yeah. the new one, the new one covers nine HPV strains. Wow. So it's a vaccination. So it's a vaccination which um, you you have usually they they do it in school now. Um, yeah. Or, so, so I remember Nurse was eleven or twelve. When she yeah. Had it. I, exactly. Exactly. And she had two injections. Yeah. But that would have been because our daughter's the same age. So it's quite long. Ago. But at twenty, can they have? The rest yeah. of those yeah they, can they you can. give that yes yeah bring her in okay right. i'm going to send nays yeah. down to have to get yeah. that finished you just off. have to tell me beforehand so i can order it in because it has to be kept in the yeah 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 i will okay. i'll ask her when she's next yeah around okay to do that and we can come in and i can have a smear she can have injection and she can yeah. have a smear as well okay definitely uh, so so that's why it's important so um i just want to say because sometimes the symptoms of cervical cancer, um, people aren't really sure what what might or or, or when to um, when do you go and see your GP. So if you get any bleeding yeah. during sex, any any bleeding after sex, any bleeding in the middle of your cycle, yeah, or any bleeding after your menopause, then these are all things to be concerned about or, or go and get checked out about. Okay. I mean, they, they, they can be, in younger women, a bit of bleeding and spotting can be due to what's called um, cervical erosions, which is just because they're on the pill, maybe, just because they're young. Yeah. So it's just because the cervix is looking um, very healthy. Um, yes, Victoria, it is something that I offer. Um, but um, but so, 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 you know, don't always get alarmed by that. Um, and the other thing is, Sometimes women get this kind of pain, you know, just between their sort of bones at the back, you know, in the, yeah. in the lower back. back. And, and, and that's another thing, you know, that can be another symptom if, that, if you've got this pain and if your vaginal discharge isn't normal. So if any of those things happen, normally I would yeah. always do a um, sexual health screen. So you look yeah. for, just in case there might be an infection causing it, but also to look at when was your last smear, you know, do you need another one? Um, so, so that's one of the reasons, um, yeah, you, yeah, I get that. to go and yeah. get checked. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Didn't realize he could have had it done on the NHS. No, they've only just introduced it for boys since, um, last year. So for year eight boys, whereas before that they didn't, um, offer it to boys. So I think it was a lot of campaigning that sort of said, well, why is it that just women, you know, um, if, if boys have it, then boys can't transmit the infection. So it's quite good. Um, that yeah. they started it for year eight boys as well. People don't know that HPV virus can also cause head and neck cancer. Yes, it can cause oral cancers as well, but um, 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 and it could also cause cancer of the vagina um, um, and, and anus as well. So, so there, but you know, because we're talking about cervical cancers, I didn't sort of um, uh, yeah. mention it. It says, can you have a UTI without the pain, just frequent peeing? Yes. So it could be that you're just peeing quite frequently. So you know, you take a sample in, your GP will dipstick it and they may see some blood in it. Um, and 
and and you know you just drink plenty cranberry juice you know maybe some pain relief um some citrusy stuff helps to neutralize the um the 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 urine yeah. um, but um but um if it continues and you may need antibiotics usually it's only a three day course of antibiotics yeah you yeah what is a normal vaginal discharge do yeah. they mean color well the normal vaginal discharge so so premenopause you know because we have a hormonal cycle yeah your your vaginal discharge would vary during your cycle so at the beginning of it you know so sort of just following on from your periods it's um it it gets runnier and runnier and waterier because when ovulation happens you know from an evolution point of view you know it's meant to be that you know the sperm comes in and off you know it fertilizes with the egg so that's why you have runny vaginal discharge to assist the sperm and the egg meeting um when okay. that doesn't and then once ovulation doesn't happen then the your vaginal discharge tends to be a bit thicker creamier stickier like you might see it at the bottom of your um on your knickers yeah um, so so you know vaginal discharge is so it's normal to have vaginal discharge um yeah, it's not of it's not normal for it to be smelly like a fishy smell or um uh, you know not your normal smell um so 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 you know if, and it's not normal for it to be blood stained so normal vaginal discharge you'll sort of get used to it a little bit vaginal just... discharge is just varies i mean it, it you know you just get used to your own vaginal discharge but it does vary from thick runny to thick and sticky okay and the runny is to help the sperm yeah so so of so course. you know so you when you've got that thicky yeah, yeah and the thicky the thick at the end afterwards is really like to act like a plug to almost you know from an evolution point of view again to to prevent that sperm and the egg coming cutting. out yeah I mean that's how yeah, I tend to think of it in my sense, head, yeah. doesn't it? But it's because your hormones are varying because your estrogen peaks in the middle, comes yeah. down, and your progesterone co goes up. So that's why um, it becomes stickier towards the um, just before mm. your periods because your estrogen levels are less. 